Hello guys, welcome back to the academy. So in this video, we will see a simple block, iliohypogastric and ilioinguinal nerve block. Even though it is said to need an intermediate level of skill for doing this block, I feel everyone can do this block, it's a very easy block. In ultrasound, we can easily identify the landmarks and we can easily identify the nerves and the surrounding vessels. So everyone can do this block and I am sure that after watching this video, you will be able to do the block very easily. So ultrasound gated block is what we are going to discuss here. Okay, let's go for the video. So first, let's see the anatomy related to these blocks. So ilioinguinal and iliohypogastric nerves are the branches of lumbar plexus. As you can see in this image, these are the first two branches which are coming from lumbar plexus. So basic nerve root value is L1 and with some branches coming from T12 as well. So the posterior part or the origin part of the nerves which is coming lateral to the psoas muscle, those parts are which are not significant for this block I am not covering here. We will just see the lateral and the anterior course of these nerves. If you see the ilioinguinal nerve, in the posterior part of the course of the nerve, it is seen deep to the transverse abdominis muscle and in the lateral part of the course, it will pierce the transverse abdominis muscle and lie in between the transverse abdominis and the internal oblique. And when it comes to the anterior part of the course, that is medial to the anterior superior iliac spine, it will pierce the posterior wall of the inguinal canal and it will enter the inguinal canal and it will exit through the superficial inguinal ring. And further anteriorly, it will supply the anterior part of the scrotum, labia majora and the associated muscles and the underlying peritoneum. So the ilioinguinal nerve in the posterior part is deep to the transverse abdominis muscle. Further laterally and anteriorly, it will lie in between the transverse abdominis and internal oblique muscle. Further medial to the anterior superior iliac spine, it will lie in the inguinal canal and exit through the superficial inguinal ring. And if you see the iliohypogastric nerve, it will follow almost the same course as the ilioinguinal nerve. But the main difference is that towards the iliac crest region, it will divide into two cutaneous branches. It has got a lateral cutaneous branch and a medial cutaneous branch. The lateral cutaneous branch will pierce the internal oblique muscle and the external oblique muscle and it will supply the skin overlying the lateral part of the gluteus muscle. This nerve block is not much of significance unless you want an analgesia in the supplied region. The major part is supplied by the medial cutaneous branch which is seen in the same plane as the transverse abdominis and the internal oblique muscle. Further medially, this branch will also pierce the internal oblique and external oblique and it will supply the skin overlying the inguinal ligament and this muscles and the underlying peritoneum. So it is the medial cutaneous branch of the iliohypogastric nerve which is significant for us. Lateral cutaneous branch is not much of significance. So this is the area which is supplied by the medial cutaneous branch of the iliohypogastric nerve and this is the area which is supplied by the ilioinguinal branch coming from the lumbar plexus. So if you see the sensory supply or the dermatome innervation of these two nerves, it will supply the hypogastric region, the skin overlying the inguinal ligament or the inguinal crease, the upper medial part of the thigh and the mons pubis labia majora the root of penis and the anterior part of the scrotum is the one which are usually supplied and there may be wide variation in the sensory distribution especially in the genital region. So these two nerves will supply the skin areas or the dermatomes which I said now. Apart from that they will supply these muscles that is the internal oblique, external oblique and transverse abdominis and the parietal peritoneum is also supplied by these two nerves. So this is the osteotum supply of the ilioinguinal and the iliohypogastric nerve. As you can see, this supplies the part of the iliac crest. But these are not the only two nerves which supply iliac crest, it has got very complicated innervation. So just giving these two blocks will not be sufficient for iliac crest, bone grafting, post-operative analgesia or for the anesthesia purpose. So scanning is done with the patient in supine position. We use a high frequency linear transducer probe. The one end of the probe is kept near the anterior superior iliac spine, to be precise, medial to anterior superior iliac spine. And the probe is oriented in such a way that it is placed on a line joining the anterior superior iliac spine and the umbilicus. So if you keep the probe like this, these are the structures which we can see. Superficial most what we are seeing is the subcutaneous tissue. 
Deep to that we can see the three muscles external oblique muscle, internal oblique muscle and the transverse abdominis. Easiest identification is internal oblique muscle will be the thickest of the three and the transverse abdominis will be the thinnest one. And deep to the transverse abdominis muscle we can see the transverse abdominis muscle fascia as well. Same as how we see in the tab block. And the target area is also same as how we see in tap lock that is between the internal oblique and the transverse abdominis muscle. Here we can easily identify these two nerves which are the iliohypogastric and the ilioinguinal nerves which are seen as hyperechoic oval structures between internal oblique and transverse abdominis. Another identification is we can identify the deep circumflex iliac artery which is seen in the same plane. If you can put the color Doppler, you can identify the pulsation of the vessel and you can identify the plane clearly. So once you identify these structures, it is better to scan more proximally that is towards the lateral to the anterior superior iliac spine side so that you can avoid sparing of any branches if you are giving local anesthetic. So the more proximal you see, the better block efficiency you will get. If we see the uses of these two blocks, it's mainly used for analgesia following surgeries in the inguinal region, hernioplasties or hernioraphies, for incision and drainage of any collection, and also for management of any postoperative complications associated with hernia surgeries. Another use is following the in surgeries with suprapubic incision such as abdominal hysterectomies or lower segment cesarean section, but we have to give bilateral blocks. Then you can use it for genital surgery such as varicocele surgery, hydrocele surgery and for orchidopexy. In chronic pain management, these are used for ilioinguinal or iliohypogastric nerve entrapment neuropathy or neuralgias for their diagnosis as well as for treatment. In implant technique, we are standing on the side to be blocked and the ultrasound machine is kept on the opposite side. We keep the probe as I said, we use a high frequency linear transducer probe which is kept on the line joining anterior superior iliac spine and the umbilicus. And we identify these structures. As I said, it is best if you can scan more proximally, maybe up till the mid axillary line and give the block so that you can avoid sparing of any branches. So in in-plane technique, either we can do a lateral to medial needle direction. In that case, we have to stand on the side to be blocked. But only problem is when you are inserting the lead in lateral to medial, there may be some interference because of the anterior superior iliac spine. But if you are giving a more proximal block, that may not be an issue. So you direct the needle lateral to medial, you cross skin, subcutaneous tissue, external oblique muscle, internal oblique muscle. And once you pierce the internal oblique muscle, you deposit local anesthetic near the two nerves. So you can deposit around 5 ml of local anesthetic near the ilioinguinal nerve. And then you can redirect the needle to deposit the local anesthetic around 5 ml again near the iliohypogastric nerve. Or in the plane which you have identified, you can just deposit 10 ml of local anesthetic. But if you can target the nerves separately, it will increase the block success rate. In the medial to lateral needle direction, one advantage is you can avoid the interference with the anterior superior iliac spine and needling. But you have to stand on the opposite side. That is, if you are blocking on right side, you have to stand on the left side so that you can easily do the needling technique. Another important needling technique which I would suggest everyone should try is out of plane technique. Because of the superficial nature of the structure, it is very easy to do an out of plane technique like any other blocks. But you can do any technique whichever is comfortable for you. To see the local anesthetic used, we have to use around 10 to 15 ml of local anesthetic that is 0.5 percentage of bupivacaine, levobupivacaine or ropivacaine whichever is available. For pediatric patients, 0.15 ml per kg is what which is used routinely. Even half dose has been used with variable success rate. So if you give the block, onset of the effect will be within 10 to 15 minutes and without an additive, you will get around 5 to 6 hours of block. You can add additives like dexamethasone 0.1 mg per kg or clonidine or dexmedetomidine same dose around 1 microgram per kilogram whichever is available for you you can add so that you can have better effectiveness and duration of the block. If you are giving the block for chronic pain management such as ilioinguinal or iliohypogastric nerve entrapment neuropathy or neuralgia we have to add 40 to 80 milligrams of methylprednisone.
few things which you have to note if you are giving these blocks first thing if it's an obese patient it is better to do an out of plane technique because otherwise you will need a longer length of needle for an in plane technique second thing in obese patients for easily identification of the muscles because of the thick subcutaneous fat it may be difficult to identify the muscle layers an easy identification mark which you can use is internal oblique will be the thickest muscle and the transverse abdominis will be the thinnest muscle and if you are giving ilio inguinal ilio hypogastric nerve block as a sole anesthetic agent for inguinal herniorrhaphis or hernioplasties there may be some discomfort for the patient especially during the hernia sac handling so in that case either you can ask the surgeon to give some local infiltration or we can give some sedation or analgesic according to the situation If you see the complications following these block these are mainly seen with blind technique and not with ultrasound technique most common complication is you can have a block failure second your needle may be directed too much inside you can have a peritoneal and bowel puncture with associated hematoma you can have puncture deep to iliacus fascia and you can have transient femoral nerve palsy with transient quadriceps weakness but it will resolve within few hours So if we compare the blocks with other blocks one of the most commonly given block is tap block so it has got almost similar efficacy than with the tap block and it was found that if you can give ilioinguinal and iliohypogastric nerve block along with tap block it has got more efficacy than giving the blocks alone and if we compare with the ql block it has got almost similar efficacy of that of ql block but this is an easier technique to give the block than giving a ql block And if you see in comparison with caudal block again it has got similar efficacy with that of a caudal block. If you see in patients who are undergoing inguinal hernia surgeries in day care procedure it was found that patients who received general anesthesia with ilioinguinal and iliohypogastric nerve block had more patient satisfaction than patients who did the procedure under spinal anesthesia. So that completes the video of the ilioinguinal and iliohypogastric nerve block. So I hope all of you understood how to give a block and I feel that you would have understood it is an easy block to give and I hope you will do these blocks in future. Thank you and please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share.